So far this year, in 2023, I have only read 10 2023 releases. And like, you may say, Megan, that's not that bad. But as someone whose reading is my job, like reading books, like pff, reading books is literally my job. That's not great. <laughs> so I want to prioritize reading more 2023 releases. And I remembered that Goodreads a little while ago posted this list called Readers Hit Books of 2023. I believe this is a list of the most popular 2023 releases so far this year. I think that's the idea. Some may be end of 2022 releases, but I think most of them are 2023 releases. And I believe it's split into genres. And so my idea for this vlog is I, my hand look, whoa. <laughs> my idea for this vlog is I want to have read at least one book from every genre. I read pretty widely. I read pretty much all genres in my reading. So I can't, I don't know, I haven't looked through the list. So I don't know what all the genres are, but I want to have read at least one. At least one from each genre is the goal. So I don't know how many books we're going to be reading in this vlog. It could be three, it could be ten. I don't know how many genres there are. <laughs> I don't know what I'm really undertaking here. But shall we just look through the list together and find out what I'm going to be reading? I'm ready. Okay. Whenever you're ready. I'm ready. Okay. I'm ready. Whenever you're ready. I'm ready. So, oh, first is, oh, okay, 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 okay. First is contemporary fiction. I don't think I'm gonna really have read, okay, yeah. Haven't read any of these, but we're gonna read Yellow Face. Oh my God, why is that not marked as want to read? Hello? Um, what's going on? What's going on? I must have forgot to add that to my Goodreads. Oh dear, anyways. <laughs> Um, but let's, we'll read Yellow Face for contemporary fiction. I am so excited. R. F. Kwong is becoming one of my favorite authors. You guys know Babel was my favorite book of last year. So I am really excited to finally get to read Yellow Face. Okay, fun. Historical. Historical fiction. I don't, I don't think I've read any 2020. Yeah, I haven't read any of these nine. Okay, what one do I want to read? Have I heard of any of these? <laughs> oh, shit. I was kind of hoping I'd like own one at least from each genre to pick to read. Um, I don't own any of them. I've heard of Wayward, actually. Lots of people have been recommending Wayward to me. I think it's about three different women who all live at this house throughout different periods in time. And I've heard such good things. So I'll have to get my hands on Wayward. But we're gonna read Wayward for historical fiction. So many people told me I'm gonna love that. So many people who read loads of different things. Like I've seen people who love fantasy love it. I've seen people who read more like literary fiction love it. So I'm really intrigued to see what style of book it is. So Wayward is historical fiction. Mystery, oh, I've read All the Dangerous Things. So we don't need to read anything for mystery. Though I would have been happy to. I probably would have read Vera Wong. Why is that? What is going on? <laughs> Why have I got multiple books that I own that aren't? That means my owned TBR is even worse than I thought. Dear God, I like refuse to believe this. What is going on? Got to be one of the worst days I think I've ever had. <laughs> Being deadly serious. <laughs> Right, so yeah, don't need to read anything from history. Fantasy, I've read Fourth Wing. Would have picked Hellbent if I hadn't read Fourth Wing, but I've read a fantasy. Also, I'm very intrigued by the Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies. Everyone has been raving about it, so maybe that's one I need to get to. But um, yeah, I've read a fantasy, so I don't need to read that. Sci-fi, oh, we'll read that if not. No, I haven't read any. Okay, we're gonna read In the Lives of Puppets by TJ Klune. Oh my God, I'm reading like all my most anticipated books. <laughs> Fuck. We're gonna read In the Lives of Puppets. TJ Klune, I have given two five stars. If this is a five star, TJ Klune cements himself as one of my favorite authors of all time, because you gotta get three five stars. I think that's something Kayla came up with originally from Books and Lala, but I just stole it. But it makes sense. You gotta give them three five stars before they're a favorite author. So that's exciting. So we've got, so far, what have we got? Yellow Face, Wayward, In the Lives of Puppets. Horror. Ooh. No, I haven't read any of the horror. We're gonna read A House With Good Bones because I own it. <laughs> I'd wanna read How To Sell A Haunted House by Grady Hendrix so badly, especially since my last vlog where I really, really enjoyed um, Southern Book Club's Guide to Saying Vampires. But I refused to buy the UK cover and I can't find a way, it's not on Blackwell's, but Depository's gone. Like, I can't find a way to get the US cover and I, it's just so much nicer. So, <laughs> what am I supposed to say? Um, but no, we're gonna read A House With Good Bones by T. Kingfisher. Gosh, that's exciting. I've been so excited for that one as well. Um, romance. I don't think I've read any romance. Okay, no. What are we gonna read? Uh, we'll read yours truly. <gasps> I read, um, Part of Your World by Abby Jimenez. Was it the start of this year? Or last year? I don't know. I read it with my patron book club and everyone 
loved it. It's so good. And yours truly, I wouldn't call it a series. I haven't put it on my series spreadsheet, but I would call them companion books, you know? And I guess they kind of are a series, but I'm just in denial that they are, and I'm just not recognising them as a series because I don't want to add another book to my series spreadsheet. But we're going to read yours truly. We're following, like, the best friend from part of your world. That is exciting. I really think Abby Jimenez could be a new favourite romance author for me. Young adult. Have I read any young adult? Oh, I have! I read Highly Suspicious and Unfairly Cute. I really want to get Warrior Girl on Earth by Anjani Booty, but I still haven't read, um, what's it called? Firekeeper's Daughter. But it doesn't matter because I read, oh, I like the look of da the Davenports as well. And I've heard great things about Divine Rivals by Rebecca Ross. So anyways, I've read one. Who cares? I read Highly Suspicious and Unfairly Cute. And nonfiction, I've read Spare. Is there any more? I feel like nonfiction would be the last one. No, okay, I've read Spare. So... Let me go grab the books that we're going to be reading. Okie dokie. So our TBR for this vlog. Oh my gosh, look at the colour coordinate. <laughs> Hang on, should we like swap them around? Because I feel like that will look like... <gasps> look how cute. Wayward is going to ruin it though. <laughs> so our TBR for this vlog is these four books plus Wayward. I am so excited. These are all kind of like five star predictions to me. I'm gagged. Wow. Well, got me gagged. It's your, no, it's your neck. It got does. Me fucking gagged. No, it's... This is exciting! I'm really excited for this vlog. What am I gonna start with? I can't go over the colour coordination. Look at her! Oh, anyways, I don't know what I'm gonna start with. I have reading sprints my patrons in like half an hour. I think I'm gonna do a poll in 20 minutes actually. I think I'll do a poll and let them decide because I'm up for anything. I'm kind of equally anxious about reading them all though so I don't wanna make the decision on my own. So I'll do a poll in the live chat and I'll probably read whatever they pick. Am I ready for yellow face yet? I feel like my instinct is to start with yellow face, but I don't know if I'm ready. <laughs> okay, wish me luck, let's get going. Hello? <laughs> Hello, cuties. I am 150 pages into yellow face. I decided to start with yellow face, I gave, uh, on reading since my patrons, we did a poll. We did a poll on what I should start from this reading vlog, and Yellow Face by far was the winner. And if you don't know, basically we have got literary darling Athena and uh, our protagonist, her friend, literary nobody, the <laughs> blurb calls her, that's quite harsh, kind of like a, not a failed author, but definitely not a successful author, June. And Athena is incredibly successful, and June is incredibly jealous of her, and one night Athena dies. This is in the first chapter, okay? <laughs> she chokes on pancakes and dies. June steals her manuscript. Now, Athena is Asian and June is not. And the book is uh, talking about Chinese laborers in World War One. And June is just like, I'm gonna like rename myself Juniper Song because that's kind of racially ambiguous. Do some author shots that make me look a bit tan. And we're just gonna go for it, girlies. This is my book now. <laughs> Yeah, he's terrible, Your Honor. He's really terrible. So that's basically what you need to know. And it is this absurdist, satirical look on the publishing industry, but also about like particularly book Twitter and like book Twitter's opinions. And it's very interesting. I'm having a great time. This is very different to R.F. Kuang. I should say Rebecca, because this is Rebecca F. Kuang. Um, her previous stuff. Because this you could read in one sitting. I think I'm going to read this in basically two sittings, because I'm just literally going to finish this right now. <laughs> just, I'm, I was supposed to be doing other stuff today, and I'm like, you know what? No, I'm just going to read this book, okay? <laughs> because I don't want to do anything else. I am really enjoying it. I think it's a very interesting book. My first assumption is I think... I'm very glad I went to the author talk in London that Rebecca did for this. And I think it's very, very interesting, right? June is a terrible character, right? June is a terrible, like, like in terms of as a person. She's doing evil, 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 evil. <laughs> evil, evil. Doing evil stuff, right? Like the way that she has taken this manuscript and she has like, her logic and how she's changed it is so like a white person, like with a lack of any kind of, 
<laughs> morals or intelligence around racial issues and context and she's just like girl june weather and a lot i think i think people spoke about this at the talk like you, you're in her head and you start like not being on her side but like you do have to have to constantly remind yourself how just deluded and like terrible she is it's a very well written character june is a very interesting take on unreliable narrator terrible narrator unlikable narrator she's a very interesting take because also so the this book is talking a lot about the way that book uh, audiences and award bodies and book twitter react to books right and there's certain points it's very interesting that june makes that rebecca kind of made but june is making it's like when you do a math problem and you get the right answer but with the complete wrong working out like june is making similar points to what rebecca made but like with the complete wrong ideas behind it <laughs> so for example rebecca spoke in that talk about how she thinks that this idea of own voices that you can only write stuff that you've experienced is damaging particularly also for for the authors that we expect to write own voices stuff because our ideas around what is what we want to read what not by we i mean like the entire reading population there is ingrained ideas around what is appropriate for uh, black authors or asian authors or latino authors to write and they can be incredibly limiting and like you're basically forcing authors of color to pander to the stories that white audiences expect from them right and so i don't think she believes that that kind of uh limitation on only write what you've experienced of course there's caveats to that like if you're going to write something outside of your experience it has to come from a genuine place with research etc etc but june is making those same points but it's like completely wrong <laughs> it's like complete wrong working out complete wrong logic behind it but i just think that's interesting and i think like i said you can i'm going to read this book in, in two sittings and i think you can but i think this book would benefit from reading it a second time reading it once to like you know it's fun it's quick pace whatever but reading it a second time to really get to like the heart of what rebecca is trying to say in each different scene because i think there's many different ways of where she's critiquing publishing critiquing authors critiquing white authors who do shitty things critiquing book twitter like i think there's a lot of layers to what she's saying in this that are easy to miss or pass over in the first initial read. So that's kind of my initial assumption. I mean, that's just something that I thought about having gone to her talk, but it's saying a lot about just, just, just gosh, this is, <laughs> the steps that June makes to like justify her actions to herself are just like ridiculous. It's so different to anything that I feel like I've read from uh, RF Kuang before, but I am loving it. I don't know, however, if it's gonna be quite a five star. Don't say that. Mona, don't ever say that. I'm kind of feeling like it's a four star right now, just because I feel like as someone who is so caught up in the book community, like nothing about this, like it is so spot on, but the book has to straddle a line between appealing to people who are like terminally within the book community, <laughs> like we are, and also people who aren't. And so I just feel like there's certain elements that it's like, uh, yeah okay like I expect I mean I don't I don't know if I'm too in it I'm really loving it I just don't know if it's quite a five star I've been really picky with my five stars this year I think I've only had like 10 11 12 something around that like solid absolute five stars this year I've been pretty picky with them yeah anyways I'm gonna go finish it but I am really enjoying it and I think it's saying a lot of interesting things I'm hoping it's I, I feel like the first half was more of our uh critique part where we're critiquing all the different elements of of the community and then the second half i kind of want it to get like even more absurdist and ridiculous and i want it to veer off like reality a little bit there's been hints that it could happen and i want it to commit but i think it's incredibly clever how it is basically having a go at everyone <laughs> having a go at everyone and saying no one is right within publishing right there's so many layers of flaws <laughs> to what is going on that i just think i just think it's so clever anyways i will check in with you once i finish hopefully like in a couple hours <laughs> good evening 
How are we doing? It's quite late, but I just finished Yellow Face by RF Kuang, Rebecca F. Kuang. Don't know why I'm speaking like this. I'm gonna give this four stars. I really enjoyed it. Wasn't a five star, but that's okay. You know, Miss Rebecca is gonna go on for a long and varied career, and I imagine, you know, so far I've only had four and five stars from her. It's fine. <laughs> I really enjoyed this. I want to make clear with what I was saying <laughs> in the first clip about own voices in particular is that I still think it's incredibly important that we uplift own voices and that we encourage own voices stories but I just think this book is examining that idea and how do we kind of allow authors if they're coming from a, a good place to write about other cultures but we have a lot of terrible examples of white authors writing outside their race and doing it terribly like well june's a very extreme example i really enjoyed this i really enjoyed it i think the way it looks at the ingrained racism within publishing is very interesting i could have actually had a little bit more of the the publishing side of it there was a lot about june as this like like in her delulu land like <laughs> her the author's experience and there's a lot about twitter and like Twitter reactions. I think I could have done with a little bit more of a publishing process. I almost think it would be, basically this is like a minor, not really a spoiler, but like when June signs a publishing contract, it's with a smaller indie press. And I think it would have been even more interesting if it would had been with a big five, like an equivalent of a big five. I don't know if she wanted to steer away from that because she wanted to get in trouble, but I think it would have been even more interesting to see how the publishing mechanisms work within such a large, kind of structure like the big five who don't know the big five oh can i name them harper hachette simon and schuster penguin who am i forgetting harper hachette simon schuster penguin it's macmillan you doofus i liked the way this ascended however i do think we could have cut 40 pages, 50 pages from this book. I watched actually recently Mara from Books Like Where, I'll leave a link down below, did a stream about like, our book's a bit too long. And I think it's true at the moment that like books, I'm reading a lot of books, I think Mara felt the same, that these books aren't way, way too long, but books, reading books that could have been cut by 40, 50 pages is still a little bit of a pacing issue. And I've been noticing that too. So I think it could have been cut a little bit, but yeah, you know, talking about white privilege, talking about how, you know, people co-opt trauma that isn't their own. And the idea of that within a creative industry, where is the line between no idea is an original idea and then, you know, copying people and drawing from others' trauma. You know, there's discussions around Athena um, when she was alive, like interviewing survivors of XYZ, particularly Asian survivors of XYZ, and then just like using their stories almost directly in her stories and I just think that's an interesting dis I think there's so many interesting discussions and like I said I think it's the kind of book that you could read multiple times to get different kind of ideas and meanings from so we're off to a pretty strong start four stars I mean there was always a hope I'd give this five stars but I'm glad to have read it I have actually already started a bit of A House With Good Bones by T. King Fisher so let's get into that next I'm very very excited for this Okie dokie, so I am now halfway through A House of Good Bones. I'm really like loving it. Should we say loving it? <laughs> Feast your bloody eyes on these high quality goods. I'm really, really enjoying this. So all you need to know, it says haunting Southern Gothic. It is that kind of vibe, it's horror. We are following a character who has to move back home with her mother because like something's happened with her work. So she's kind of just moving in there temporarily while she waits for the work thing to be fixed. She's an archeologist, there's a problem at the archeology side. That's in the weeds, we don't need to know that. So she's moved back into the house and this is the house that they lived at for a while with her grandmother. It was originally her grandmother's house and she gets to the house and stuff has changed, right? Her mum used to have the house painted in these bright colours or whatever. Now it's all white. Her mother has put back up this painting that her grandmother had of like a confederate wedding. And she's like, what the fuck? My mum is like very anti-racist. What the hell is going on here? That's concerning. So there's just lots of weird changes around the house. And her mother is kind of acting like scared of something. I think we can kind of, you know, predict where it's going. But... 
I'm loving it. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. This is my second T. Kingfisher, but I feel like it's my first like proper go with her because my first book was What Moves the Dead, which is kind of like a novella, isn't it? And I'm just like, this could be a five star. I know I have the feeling like we're gonna get multiple five stars in this vlog. I don't know why. I just I just believe <laughs> in my soul that we're going to. But all of that first half, I've pretty much just read via the audio. I haven't really picked this up physically. The audiobook is great. This is a very niche reference, okay? <laughs> but the audiobook narrator and kind of the tone that this is written in, if anyone played this is an important part of my life. If anyone played the Nancy Drew games as a kid, right? I love them dearly. I would still play them today. They're incredible. But you know, Nancy, there was a very specific, there was the same narrator of Nancy throughout. And Nancy had a very like, kind of like, even when things were going shit, she'd kind of joke about it <laughs> in the games. I don't know. The tone of narration this is really reminding me of the Nancy Drew mystery games from her interactive. <laughs> I've connected the two dots. You didn't connect shit, but I've connected them. So I don't know how to explain it other than that. It's kind of like, the, the narrative voice is very humorous and I'm just eating it up. I'm loving it. I am loving it. I think the hauntingness, like the gothic kind of like unsettlingness is done really, really well. There's been a few kind of like bigger occurrences that are a bit scarier, but they're the kind of things that can be explained away and I'm enjoying how that is building. I'm hoping it's going to go a little bit batshit crazy towards the end, but I just can't go over how much I'm really loving the style this is written, the main character, the way that she views the world, the kind of like jokey tone that this is told in throughout all this kind of gothicness. I love the setting. I love the premise. It's a very contained book. Like the book is really just about her mum. Yes, they're going to other places, but like the house is the main setting and what's going on with her mum is the main setting. There's all these vultures everywhere. <laughs> it's getting weird. I'm just loving it. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. I just think T. Kingfisher, Rightfully so, has been getting so much hype, I'd say over the past year or two. And I just need to read all of her stuff because this is so good. It is so good. <laughs> so yeah, I am gonna go read the second half, but um, this could be like, this could be a five star. I'm having really good feelings. Now I do just wanna show you quickly, the other day, I haven't actually properly looked at it yet because I wanted to open it with you. I got a very unexpected package from Pan Macmillan. I wasn't expecting this, but let me show you what we've got. So this is, I believe, This Dark Descent by Kaylin Josephson. I'm gonna be honest, I haven't heard much about this book. <laughs> I don't really know anything about it. But we're gonna find out together. You are cordially invited to Veradell's prestigious Something races. A spectacle that only happens once a decade. Interesting. Okay. They sent me. We got a cute little bookmark. We have got. Oh my god. There's something with like a wax seal on it. This is fancy. Okay. So that's like praise about the book. And I'm guessing. Oh, steeped in Jewish folklore with illicit romance and a crop kingdom. Well, this explosive wire fantasy is perfect for fans of Lee Bardugo's Six of Crows. They also sent me. There's a cookie. Okay, if you want to, if you want to get on my side as a publisher, you got <laughs> sending food is a good way. And there's, don't send me cashews because I'll eat those vegan chocolates which have loads of cashew stuff in them, and I will feel very unwell because turns out I'm allergic to cashews. That's how I found out I was allergic to cashews and pistachios was because a publisher sent me vegan chocolates with like cashew paste, cashew extract, like loads of the chocolate was made up of cashews. Turns out I'm allergic. I suppose I should thank them actually because. I would never have known. And then look at the book wrapped up with this horse. Let me, let's take this off. How cute is that? That's very cute. But listen, for fans of Six of Crows, that is me. That is me. So thank you, Book Break slash Pam McMillan for sending that over. I'm gonna go eat my cookie and I'm gonna go read the second half of A House with Good Bones. I finished A House with Good Bones. I look rough today. I let my hair air dry. And it was like, meant I had a productive day. Like I, I got up this morning, guys, I did a dance, did a dance workout this morning. I broke my record for calories burnt on a dance workout. And then I had a shower and washed my hair and then I let it air dry so I could like get on with shit because my hair takes like fucking 20, 30 minutes to dry. But uh, it's left it kind of in a weird shape. Anyways. Be careful of your tongue. I don't yeah, need to be careful of my tongue. Be careful of your tongue when you're talking about women's luck. I finished House of Bones by T. King Fisher. I'm gonna give it 4.5. <laughs> if you watched my last vlog, where I was a booktube twin test video, and I read, I gave two books 4.5, and I'm kind of like, am I being harsh? 
Am I just being really picky and just not giving books five, like five stars that I should give five stars? But like I said in that video, I have a video I really want to do that I need more five stars for. And I, it'd make my life easier if I could do that video fucking tomorrow, but I can't. <laughs> I'm going to give it a 4.5. It wasn't quite a five for me, but I already know that me and T. Kingfisher we're gonna vibe. I just loved the kind of like mundaneness with this crazy horror. I just thought it was written so, so well. And I remember Mara from uh, Books Like Woe speaking in her review of this about how it's kind of like an allegory for when young adults suddenly find their parents becoming like racist or right wing because of the media or whatever, or like developing views that seem totally incongruous with the rest of their beliefs. And I would 100% agree with that. I also think, and I don't want to get into like spoiler territory, but I also think it really um, talks about how one generation tries to shield the next generation from the trauma of the generation beforehand and so on and so on. Or at least I think this happens a lot. This isn't necessarily like a universal thing, but like a mother will shield her daughter from the trauma of her grandmother. And before that and after that, the same cycle happens. You're always trying to shield your children from the trauma of what came before to give them a better life. And I just think that's really interesting. That's something that I think a lot about in my family and like the sacrifices that have been made by my family members and the, the different lives that each of kind of my generations of my family has had. Um, you know, I don't, don't talk about it a lot, but my nan um, came from like poverty in Ireland. And so just thinking about her path to my path and the differences I think is really interesting. So yeah, I love T. Kingfisher's writing. I still haven't found a five star, but I know we're on the cusp. We'll get a five star eventually, me and T. Kingfisher. It's not out of the realm of possibility. Yeah, I would really recommend this. This is some of my favorite horror I've read. I just couldn't quite give it a five star. Like I feel like I prefer it to a lot of other horror I've read. I mean, what horror have I given a five star? Star. Is there anything on my horror shelf? Moon of the Crusted Snow, <laughs> The Weight of Blood. Did I give Year of the Witching five stars? Wilder Girls, if you count that as horror? I don't know. But this is definitely up there for me in horror and I just loved it. I think I'm gonna go start Wayward next. I thought let's like put this in the middle because this is the book that I didn't already have on my TBR that I don't really know anything about. Is that a sticker that I can take off? Yeah, that you're coming off. <laughs> I'm gonna go make dinner for my family and so I'm gonna start the audiobook for this. I just know we're following women from three different points in history. Let's have a look actually. 2019, 1942 and 1619 and I don't know if they're related, like if it's generational, but I know they're all at this wayward cottage. It's called wayward, wayward cottage and I know it's witchy. That's all I really know. So I'll maybe check in with you once I've read the first 100 pages. I reckon I'll get close to that whilst cooking probably with the audio. On what kind of my initial thoughts are, because I don't really know anything other than that. I'm a little bit nervous about the split timeline element, because we know that's not always my favorite. That bitch is so fucking evil. Why would she say that? But usually I have a bigger problem when it's two. So I don't know how I'll deal with three. We shall see. Anyways, I'll check in with you once I've finished dinner probably. Okay, <laughs> I'm 100 pages in. It's okay. <laughs> I am thinking that the triple, it's not even a dual timeline, the triple timeline is it's not my favorite because I'm having the same problem again where I feel, I've read a hundred pages of a book, but I feel, it's the police, it's the sound of the police. I feel like I've only read 30 pages of each story, right? Like we've barely scratched the surface of any kind of substance and all the characters just feel lacking. They feel like such stereotypical without nuance versions of each of the kind of stories they are. You've got a witch on trial, you've got a young woman in a, in a rich family stifled by their, you know, lack of heart and soul. And then you've got a woman who is fleeing abuse to a family cottage in the countryside, right? It's kind of the three stories set in three different times. And it's fine, <laughs> but they all feel like, particularly for me, that the older two, the witch on trial and the 
girl, you know, who loves the trees and you know, her dad doesn't understand. They just feel like such like, you know, I feel like those stories have been told a hundred times before. And then the idea is obviously that all these women are going to be related in some way and there might be some like witchy thing going on. I'm not hating it. It's like a three right now if I had to rate the first 100 pages. I'm also getting the feeling that I get, I don't know if I've told you guys before, right? Like I can read long books, right? But it's something about consuming. I've read Yellow Face, House of Good Bones, and this. This has been three days so far, this log. And I don't usually read that quickly. And I've been reading the books quickly because I'm interested and because I want to get this video out in a timely manner. But I, it hasn't really been a struggle to read those books that quickly. But I am feeling like when I consume too many stories, I get a bit overwhelmed. And this is like fucking three stories in one. It's not exactly helping. <laughs> it feels also very like stereotypical British writing plot. I don't know how to describe this to you, but there's something about like mainstream general modern fiction in the UK that isn't like, it's not reaching for the book or whatever, like kind of marketable general fiction, but that thinks it's a little bit clever and it's like doing something. They're all the same. They all write the same. They all are in this same font. They're probably all published by HarperCollins. <laughs> Get a date. I'm just gonna carry on listening and reading. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> I don't want to talk about it. Why do I keep doing that voice? What the hell is going on? I am on page 226 of Wayward. I am still so bored. I'm really bored. And it is the triple timeline. It is, it is, It. I know it is. It's the culprit, okay? I just can't do it. What is it about me? I just don't like it. I don't like it because literally, I've read, what, almost 130 pages since I last spoke to you. Not, nothing's really happened. Nothing's really happened because that's only like fucking, I can't do maths, but like 45 pages of each story. So what is there to talk about? What is there to talk about? Nothing! <laughs> Bored shitless! I am enjoying the pre the most like present day timeline, perhaps the most, because it's about a woman kind of finding herself after abuse and kind of rebuilding her life. But I would just warn you, there's a lot of violence against women in this. It's just quite sad, really. It's quite sad. It says that it's empowering. I don't know. <laughs> I just find it a bit depressing, everything that's happening. And there hasn't really been much witchiness yet. There's been a hint. There's been like hints of witchiness, but there hasn't been much. And I'm just bored. I have nothing else to say to you. Part of me would DNF. Like I am tempted to DNF it, but at this point, let's just finish the book. But like, it's not bad. Do you know what I mean? The writing isn't bad. It's just so derivative of like this kind of genre of like, British historical fiction. Think like, I think Bridget, Bridget, what's her name? Bridget Collins blurbs it. It's like similar to her. I mean, I don't think I've ever, have I ever read her? I don't know. It reminds me of just any kind of generic British historical-esque thing that I've ever read. I don't feel connected to any of the characters. Gripping, exhilarating, empowering, magnificent, fierce, intricate. I would not prescribe any of those adjectives to this book personally. But I know, I wanna to communicate to you that I know a big part of a barrier for this for me is that timeline issue, because it's just something that doesn't work for me as a reader, right? We all have things that work for us, don't work for us. So that's just something that doesn't work for me. I think the endings could be interesting. They just need to go somewhere. I feel like we've nothing has happened. Nothing. <laughs> has happened. At the moment, I'd, I'd just probably slipped down to like a 2.5, but I don't think it's bad. I don't think it's bad. And I think if timeline stuff is an issue for you, isn't an issue for you, then you may enjoy it. I don't know, guys. I'm just gonna go ahead and finish it. I can't believe, this has been like one of the most popular releases of the year, I feel like, in the UK. And I'm just, I really couldn't care less. I could happily DNF it now, but I'm not going to. I'm gonna finish it and give you my thoughts. Cause at this point, I just wanna get another book on my like red list for the year because <laughs> if I've already put in the hours, I might as well finish it off. Let's, let's see if it picks up at the end. <laughs> right, well, I finished it. <laughs> I finished it guys. I'm gonna give this 2.5, okay? I'm giving this 2.5. I was just bored, right? And I know, and you know, we all know that a massive barrier for me in this was the triple timeline. <laughs> 
I hate her. I tell you now. I just like, I'm, I, I don't care. It's like a three 100 page novellas where I barely got to know the characters and barely any character development happened. You know, I don't mind a dual timeline where there's one main timeline. I don't like dual timeline when there's like two competing for dominance. And even though in this one, the present day timeline was the one that we felt like we were truly in like you felt like you were in that one and you were kind of using it to learn about the two of the past timelines it still didn't work for me it didn't work for me and like if you're gonna do witches give me a vibe give me like i need a witchy vibe or some kind of vibe it needs to be atmospheric you say witches i say atmosphere like that is <laughs> they're intrinsically linked and i think perhaps like some of them kind of had a i don't know the violet one is set in 1942 that could have been in the 1920s or even Victorian times like it wasn't distinct the one in 1619 you know I guess <laughs> but also there was no cohesion right I think that's the problem there was no cohesion because you couldn't really establish a vibe because they were set in such different time time frames there was no cohesion throughout the book I didn't feel like the pacing was great I didn't care about the characters but if multiple timelines doesn't and here's the thing i don't like read a book and i'm like oh it's i think time, like dual timelines or triple timelines or whatever bad i think they're bad i don't it just doesn't work for me okay it just doesn't work for me <laughs> so there's nothing more to say about you i, I generally I don't have anything else to say it was boring but i don't think it's bad i think the writing's okay i can see that other people could enjoy this but for me it's 2.5. But this was the only book that wasn't already on my TBR and that I had to pick up for this video. We have two books left in this log. I'm gonna start yours truly next because my heart feels like it needs cleansing. I need something joyful and I really enjoyed Part of Your World by Abby Jimenez. I gave it a four and we're following the best friend from that in this. So I'm just gonna read as much of this as I can tonight. I've got the audiobook again for this because I loved the audiobook for Part of Your World. I thought it was such a good audiobook. So... We shall see, but yeah, I need anything to get up. It was just boredom, guys. And oh, that was the other thing about Wayward. I knew that was one other thing I wanted to say. The stories were so predictable, right? I knew where each, I knew from the beginning. You, they're so like archetypal. And I like that in some things, like I like a good archetypal character in like a murder mystery, that's fun, right? But these stories was, I'd read them, I've read them a hundred times before, each of these three stories, that you knew exactly where they were gonna go. You just didn't know maybe quite how they'd get there, but you kind of knew what the resol resolution of all of them would be. You just didn't know quite know what the path would be, but it was pretty predictable. Anyways, we're leaving that in the past <laughs> and I'm gonna go ahead and start yours truly. my love heart pajamas on i'm in the mood for love guys i'm in the mood for love <laughs> i am halfway through yours truly this is exactly what i needed after wayward it's riff it's oh <laughs> i love it i love it <laughs> still alive again guys i am really enjoying yours truly so this is a romance we met brianna our main girly in part of your world by abby jimenez she was the bestie and now she's the main girl it's our time to shine a new doctor arrives at the hospital that she works at at first it's a little bit like mm, don't know but then they start like writing letters <sighs> They start writing letters to one another, like leave them on the, leaving them on the locker, and then it's like fake dating as well. And Abby uh, Jimenez may be like pushing as my second favorite romance author. I seem to like sciencey romances. <laughs> but I was thinking actually, I think I gave part of your four. In my recollection, it's more of a four point five. Actually, I would give that a four point five now. And I'm like, do I prefer this to part of your world? Is it as good? Like, it's freaking me out. I think that's part of a problem with romances when they're like a series. Is I really compare them because it's like a series, but like each romance, you're comparing each romance to like another romance. Whereas fantasy, it's like the whole book, right? We are comparing how does this romance connection hit compared to uh, the previous book. Anyways, I think Abby Jimenez is really good at writing not cringe romance. So much romance or like contemporary with a hint of romance books that I read are cringe. I hate to break it to you guys. They, I'm, they cr they're cringe. Okay, I'm, this, is the, this is the bottom line. Everybody was thinking it. I just said it. Okay, 
I have a low cringe barometer when it comes to particularly romance and like contemporary. Like I can be set off quite easily, but no cringe. I'm loving, I'm loving them. I'm loving them. I can't put it down. The audiobook's amazing. We have both perspectives. I think that was the same in Part of Your World. You have, you read from both perspectives in the romance and just like seeing how they're feeling towards one another in these situations. <gasps> oh, it's just beautiful. I'm just loving it. I'm loving it. It's like, I imagine I'm not the kind of girly to like smile and kick my feet, but it's like in my head, I'm like, <laughs> And usually I like Grump Sunshine. This isn't Grump Sunshine. Usually the only references I rate high are Grump Sunshine. He has got like quite severe social anxiety. She's definitely the more outgoing one of them, but it's like a really nice dynamic. But like they're both out of these really serious relationships. She's just getting divorced from like a 10 year marriage. And so neither of them are like, oh, should we, do we? the connections there girly the connections there he's a very lovely giving person but also i feel like abby jimenez and well, I, we haven't gone into like the whole you know there's gonna be a third act conflict but i already know i'm not gonna get pissed off by it well let me not say that because sometimes it could be miscommunication i feel like these two have got miscommunication in their tool belt i mean all, almost all romance third act conflicts i've read are some form of miscommunication if someone gets the wrong end of the stick and storms off through either anger or usually like self-doubt and insecurity and then they come back together i mean it's usually what it is but i just feel like she's good at writing flaws and my mum was saying this she's read this as well and she was yeah she was saying she's good at writing flawed characters and i feel like she is they're not just like you know amazing they have issues they have stuff they're working through i'm really i'm feeling the love i'm feeling the love i'm just gonna finish this tonight guys i'm gonna go light a candle i'm gonna Get, I'm starting to want to get a little bit bit autumnal. I can't believe I just said that out loud. Bastard. Well, now here's the thing. I actually need to speak to you about this. I, it is insane to me that you American girlies view August as the start of fall because for uh, I know you go back to school at the end of August. Now we go back to school at the start of September. So August is the only month in the UK that you have entirely off in the summer holiday. So to me, August is the month of summer, the month of summer usually. We've just had shit weather. We've had like no summer where I live. I know like we're incredibly lucky in the grand scheme of things, like so many places in the world have had extreme heat, but I feel like we haven't had a summer. So I'm kind of like ready to lean in into the full vibes. And I'm usually not that kind of girl. I am a summer girl, but we haven't had any. And so unless it m miraculously appears, I'm kind of ready to lean in. So I'm gonna light a candle, I'm gonna get cozy. I might put like an ambience video off my laptop and we're gonna finish. I'm just loving their connection. I think they're so sweet. I really love them. And the fake dating is quite an enjoyable fake dating. Sometimes I don't love that. Oh, there's gonna be a wedding as well. We're gonna, I feel like we're leading up to a wedding. Is that a spoiler? No, I can tell you that. That's right at the beginning. His ex-girlfriend is now getting married to his brother. I'm in a complete state of shock. I forgot what I was gonna say. And he's like trying to be cool with it. I'm like, my guy, you could very easily not be cool, but he wants like the family to be okay. I'm like, oh, Jacob, you're too kind and precious. <laughs> Stop it. Anyways, I'm looking forward to the wedding. I hope like shit goes down at the wedding. That's like the drama in me. Let's just say the devil made me do it. No, okay. Let's just say the devil made me do it. I'm really excited. I finished Yours Truly by Abby Jimenez. I'm gonna give this a four star. I feel like we've had like, other than Wayward, good, really good books so far, but I just, guys, I said we were gonna get multiple five stars in this vlog and it hasn't happened. <laughs> I'm just being harsh with my five stars this year, apparently. Only 11 this whole year. And a lot of them even aren't like my favorites of all time five stars. What's going on? Anyways, <laughs> I do think I prefer part of your world. I do prefer part of your world. I preferred the relationship in this and the storyline and like the small town vibes. I think they just had more of my kind of vibe. And I, the, so that's reason number one, it's not a five star. And reason number two, there's only two reasons really. Reason number two, it's not a five star is I do think this is a bit long. Why does a romance need to be basically 400 pages? I just don't think a romance ever needs to be that long. How long is part of your world? Part of your world is pretty long too, to be fair. They're both around the same length. I just don't, I don't think they need to be that long. <laughs> no, it's true. Oh, it's true. I think we can do bish bash bosh. We can get it done. I think, 
Also, this is like a minor spoiler, but like romances, can you ever spoil them? They are not together for a massive portion of this book. This is not like a, they fall in love quickly and then they're together and then they break up. This isn't, that's not what this is. They're like not together. They're fake dating for a lot of the book, but they're not together for a lot of it. And I wish we could have seen a bit more of them like actually in a relationship. I felt a little bit blue balled by it, not gonna lie. <laughs> But I think this tackles, you know, serious issues really well. Anxiety, um, stuff around pregnancy plays a big role in the latter half of this book. Brianna's brother has, I don't know what the correct word is, but like ki kidney failure, I believe. Um, and I think those issues are all handled really well. And I love Abby Jimenez's writing. I love her relationships. It's just a fourth star for me. It takes a lot. I've only given one romance Oh no, Yerba Buena. I've given, Yerba Buena is like not like your typical, typical romance though. It's got a bit more of like a literary fiction edge. But Yerba Buena and The Love Hypothesis are the only romances I've ever given five stars. So it takes a lot. I enjoyed it. It was fun. It was exactly what I needed at the moment. It was lighthearted. I really enjoyed it. Now, we have one book left. I've got it in into green to like be, you know, we got a match. Look at the sprayed edges of that. Can you, are they focusing? Look at that. Tell me you're not gonna cry. <laughs> we have got one book left, In the Lives of Puppets by TJ Klune. I'm just gonna read this book today. I have got no plans. No, I got no plans today, nothing, nada. I've got no plans other than reading this book and finishing this vlog. I'm really excited. As you guys know, I've given TJ Klune two five stars already with The House of the Cerulean Sea and Under the Whispering Door. They always make me cry, so I'm prepared to cry. <laughs> so if we get one more five star, favorite author of all time. I'm really excited. All I know is that we're following like a family of of robots, I think. I'm gonna start it. I'll check in with you probably on about 100 pages, but I am just really excited to just have a chill day, read this book, have the best time, and live my life. Anyways, <laughs> let's, I'm really, this has to be five star. I need a five star. I just need five stars. What is going on? Why do I not get any five stars anymore? What's going on? Have I just become too picky? Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know. The sounds are coming out of my mouth. I'm 100 pages in. I've read the first 100 pages of In the Lie of the Puppets. I don't know. I don't know what I'm thinking. I don't know if I'm... I'm not loving it. Or what the fuck? <laughs> You better f***ing take that back right now. You better f***ing stop, 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 stop right stop. now. So, the story of this is we're following Victor, who is a human with loads of robots. They've got this kind of found family, as TJ Klune always does. There's always like a found family. His dad is like adoptive dad is there. And then they've got like a little hoover, like a little moving robot. <laughs> Hoover. And then like a nurse robot who's very like loves pain. She's called Nurse Ratched, which is like a I know that's a thing, isn't it? It's like a character who's like an evil nurse. So she's like that. Um I think this has been a very slow start. I do get the feeling that this is the kind of book that could ramp up after like the halfway mark. And then you love the second half and forget how the first half was kind of slow, but it's slow. It's like dragging for me a little bit. <sighs> wrong with me i want a five star tj clune should give me a five star but i'm just a bit bored nothing's happened they've found this is the first hundred pages it's not a spoiler they found another robot in the scrap heap and they're like trying to put him back together and save him so he's going to be a character throughout this as well there's no intrigue for me really all we've been doing is like making robots and explaining this little tree house that they live in that's like on the cover and on the spine and like we've had character development so far i'm just not loving it guys i don't know what to say to you i don't want to talk about it what is going on i'm actually uh, quite upset at one point i wanted to come outside and have a little cry yeah. i don't want to talk i don't want to chat i don't want to chit chat i don't want to kiki i don't want to i'm hoping it will ramp up, but for me, there's nothing, there's nothing about the world that is making me want to read on. Something about the writing, I mean, obviously I love TJ Klune's writing, but something about it I'm feeling disconnected from. I'm feeling disconnected from the characters, whereas usually I kind of fall in love with his characters straight away. It doesn't have, I don't think, the same cosy feel to it that House of the Sea and Under the Whispering Door have. It feels quite different tonally. 
And I just think perhaps I wasn't expecting that. It feels a bit like whiplash. I'm like, what, what the fuck is going on? Like, this isn't what I expected. So maybe I just need to like get rid of any expectations, but I'm really hoping that my enjoyment of this picks up because it's feeling like a drag. It's feeling like something I'm having to force myself through at the moment. I don't want to do this anymore. I don't want to be the reason why. <laughs> Guys, it's not hitting. Life could be worse. No, not really. This is the worst. This is the worst. This is the worst. Mm -hmm. It is not hitting how a TJ Klune book should hit. It's not. It's not. What is going on? I don't want to... I can't do this. <laughs> I can't do this. I'm like 250 pages in. I've fallen asleep whilst reading it once. I'm really, I'm not loving it. What? <laughs> I can't even, I can't even contemplate this being a reality. I'm kind of in denial. Like I'm just, I'm not, it's not happening. It's like a three, maybe even a 2.5. Probably not. Here's the thing. In enjoyment, this is probably a three, but I am in shock, right? I've only ever given TJ Clean five stars. The idea of how little I'm into this is astounding that I'm like, it, the disappointment like takes away another half a rating. I cannot believe what is happening. To give you the vibes, it's Pinocchio retelling, kind of. Uh, it's also got Wizard of Oz vibes, which I do like, but I'm bored as fuck. It's not hitting. Like, it is trying to make emotional, found family, you know, what it means to be human points. Like, it's trying to, like, you know, all of TJ Klune books try to tap into something, like, meaningful. I'm not connecting. Uh, me and it, uh, we're not vibing. Usually his points, I'm like, oh my god, so poignant. Yes, let's get into it. I'm like, okay, okay. I was in pure shock. I thought I might have misheard. I don't even know how to move on from this. I don't know how to like live a life after this. This is one of the most traumatic experiences I've ever gone through. The characters are fine. Like the little Hoover vacuum guy is funny. I, oh, by the way, I caved and got the audiobook. <laughs> I was like, I'm, I'm not into this. Maybe the audiobook can make it better. It has a little bit. I really like the voice that the audiobook narrator does for the vacuum guy. But at the end of the day, so much of our cast is robots <laughs> and they are one note in their characterization. They have, they have a shtick, all these robots, they have a shtick, which, you know, there keeps being a promise that they're going to like learn and grow wherever they are, but they are, but like it's still the shtick. They are yet to evolve from their shtick. The shtick is funny. If this has been a novella, it's too long. Why is it this long? Nothing has really happened in 250 pages. Well, things have happened, but not 250 pages worth. Guys, guys, I'm in denial. This cannot be happening. I'm gonna finish this tonight, by the way. I'm gonna finish the vlog tonight. I'm gonna finish this tonight. I've got that much left, right? I've read that much. What is happening? I'm not loving a TJ Klune. I'm not feeling like emotional. I'm not feeling like it's warm and cozy and I'm not feeling like it's saying, his books have always spoken to me so much. You know, Under the Whispering Door, I, I view as like, you know, really changed the way I, I view grief at a moment that that really mattered to me. And this, I'm, I could not give less of a fuck about anything in it. I'm gonna go finish it. I'm gonna go finish it, guys. What? I. How am I supposed to live? I... Bye. <sighs> okay, I literally just finished In the Lives of Puppets. It's like 10 o'clock at night. No, it's 20 to 10. It's not quite 10 o'clock. <laughs> I literally just finished it. And I'm gonna, oh, this one's tricky actually. I'd say that last section that I just read was probably like a four star actually. I did enjoy that last section from page 250 to 400 or whatever. But the first half, the first 250 pages was, <laughs> was uh, 2.5.
So I think I'm gonna settle on a three. I could be convinced to give it a 3.5, but then I'm gonna round it down to a three on Goodreads anyway. I'm gonna go with a three. A three is my instinct. It's a three star. Is it? No, let's go 3.5. I'm giving it a 3.5, but I am gonna round down to a three on Goodreads. I've gotten over my sadness because I did enjoy that last bit, but like I didn't enjoy it on TJ Clune levels. <laughs> and the, the messaging didn't connect with me. I didn't feel like, at times it was kind of on the nose and at times I was like, I don't actually know what this book is trying to say. Like, what's it trying to do? I think it's a bit different to some of his other books. And I think if you go in with that expectation, it might be okay for you. I just, it, it's a bit forgettable for me. It's beyond belief. It is just beyond belief. I don't think the characters land. I don't think the messaging lands until the very end. But like, I want to be connected to you throughout, right? I want to be connected to you throughout. I felt like a lot happened in this last bit. Oh, I just, guys, I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> But it's not terrible. We're giving it a 3.5, but I just expected a five star from this. I cannot believe we didn't have a single five star throughout this whole vlog. Let's rank actually what we've read in this vlog in terms of my enjoyment. This is my order. Wayward at the bottom, a house with good bones at the top. I would put yours truly above yellow face. I've just been feeling like, I think yellow face is amazing. But I just think again, similar to I guess TJ Klune with Rebecca uh, RF Kwong, like it's not quite as I don't know the poppy tr the poppy war trilogy and Babel feel so massive, right? They feel so influential. They feel so they feel like such a uh, gargantuan <laughs> undertaking. I don't know what the right word for it. And yes, the other face is influential within what it's saying about the publishing industry and it's important. But I just feel like there was a gravitas. To, maybe it's because they're like fantastical and like we associate that kind of gravitas with like fantastical stuff that was in R. Kong's previous works that I don't think is quite in yellow face. Because I think I kind of liked that from her. Like I liked, it's almost like pretentious, isn't it? That like, oh, these are like, you know, saying so much and they're long and they're these big novels and they're like, <laughs> take your ages to read them and they're intimidating. And yellow face isn't that. But I think I kind of liked that from her. I don't know. This is like 10 o'clock at night thoughts, okay? But I'm glad we've done this vlog because I have read, well, Wayward not, but the other four were 2023 releases that I was so excited for and so looking forward to and books that I wanted to prioritize reading. So I'm glad that I finally got around to it. But we had mixed successes. My number one recommendation is probably A House of Good Bones by T. King Fisher. This was my favorite. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this vlog. I don't know how long it's gonna be, but thank you for watching. Anyways, let me know if you've read any of these and your thoughts on them. I would love to know if you have different thoughts to me. Did you love In Lies Puppets? Did you not like House of Good Bones? I'm about to sneeze. Um, <laughs> thank you guys so much for watching. If you got to the end, comment a yellow or a green heart because if we ignore Wayward, we did have a fantastic colour scheme with these four. So comment a yellow or a green heart if you got to the end. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you very soon in another video. Bye!